Barcelona. Tourists visit for the sun, sea, sangria, tapas and Gaudi. Along with London, the Catalan capital has hosted the pokestars.co.uk EPT every year since the tour's inception, with Barcelona the location of the first ever event back in 2004. This year, anticipation is high, with players eager to take their seats for the first event of Season 9. Barcelona has always been one of the most popular destinations on the tour, and this year is no exception. Now, you might remember Joe and I stood in this room last year and talked about EPT Barcelona being the biggest tournament ever held in Spain. Well, that record was broken four days ago, and now it's been broken again. With more than a thousand entrants, this is officially one of the biggest EPTs ever. I actually have no recollection of that. I blame the Sangria. But with this year's record field and Elky, Johnny Lott and Phil Grusom at our feature table, there's no way I can forget this. Yeah, you're going to lay off the Sangria this time, right? Yes. Earlier this week, the Estrellas Poker Tour was held in this very room and drew a mammoth 1,036 runners, making it the biggest poker event in Spanish history. But with the EPT main event set to follow, that record never stood a chance of lasting long. Yesterday, 403 runners signed up for day 1A, and today, 679 have registered, giving us a confirmed total of 1,082 players. It's a monstrous field, and everyone's geared up for a potentially classic EPT. Barcelona is my absolute favorite city in all of Europe. I mean, the location we have for the tournament is ideal. You're right by the beach, you've got nightlife. I mean, it's a little bit of everything. It's, bad. it's fabulous. I'm very excited about the new season. It's always nice to start off with Barcelona. EPT Barcelona, I think, is, well, one of the best EPTs. Amateurs, online qualifiers, and seasoned pros are on course for an epic battle. I mean, it's nothing like a full poker. A hall, you know, the atmosphere, you know, the listening to the chips, it just, you know, the, the more players, the better, and more competition. And headlining our feature table, the legendary Elke. I really want to win here in Barcelona. It's a city and a tournament I love, and also it's the first event of the season, so I think it would be really cool to start to start with a win. Joining him, fellow high roller specialist Philip Grusom. He's had a prolific 12 months, cashing for nearly 1.8 million euros in live tournaments. This uh, EPT Barcelona is my favorite tourney uh, on the circuit. I hope I can get deep into it. Team pro Johnny Lodden is also set to take a seat under the bright lights of the TV table. His good friend and fellow Scandi Theo Jorgensen is out in the field and knows what an honor it would be to take the title. Winning a European poker tour would be pretty awesome, especially because they're so huge. But it's early doors. Every player is anticipating a deep run and clamoring at the chance to win this tournament. Each player has stumped up 5,000 euros. And with over 1,000 runners, the prize pool stands at over 5.2 million euros. The top 160 will get paid, with the winner becoming an instant millionaire and joining the select few EPT champions. For the record, Elgi did not lose a bet. He is just wearing a kimono by choice. Although it is like 100 degrees outside Celsius, so it kind of works out. To say Phil Grusom's having a good year is like saying Barcelona is warm in the summer. And which country are you from? Germany. Germany. Canadian, German, Italian, Slovenian, oh. Lithuanian. You, sir? Sweden. Oh. There is Norwegian, Bulgaria, Andre? Romania. Romania. Nice, so you got 10 countries. French wow. and Spain. <laughs> Well, that chatty chap is Blaz Svara. He's a Slovenian player with a few live caches. Bad table draw for the EPT. Making up all those different flag graphics costs more than I make in a year. A real international mix. Ten-handed on day 1B. Every player starting the tournament with 30,000 chips, so not much movement during the first couple of levels. Blind's currently 75-150. No ante in play at the moment. So let's get some action. Yeah! And fold it around. To Philippe Belly. Belly the kid. Looks like he wants to play. He qualified for this online. 450. The Canadian raises to 450. Is Elky really going to wear this? I, I honestly don't know what to say. King nine of diamonds for Elky in the cutoff, and he calls. Well, some folks would call that hand a suited connector, since you can technically flop a straight with it. The blinds fold, so we're going heads up to the flop. Calling with that hand from late position, stack this deep is totally fine. Ace, jack, five, flop. Elky's king high is still good. 
Ali gives up the betting lead. He checks to Elki. Ali the Kid versus the Kimono Dragon. Elki makes it 525. I sure hope Belly's going for a bluff raise here, if anything. No, he just calls. Well, that's fairly baffling. The turn is the Ten of Clubs. Well, that's one of the best cards in the deck for him. Now that Belly's baffled the flop betting once he picks up a flush draw, I guess makes sense. He leads out for 1,150. Elki's also picked up a gut shot. But I think Belly's got a pretty good shot at picking up this pot with a semi-bluff. Elki lets it go. Elki's like, okay, that looks weird. And it was. Which is kind of saying a lot of Elki thinks you're weird. Guy's wearing a robe at the table, yet he thinks Belly's the weird one. This is indeed a strange universe. We're heading over to our secondary feature table. And we've got action between Barry Greenstein and Aniel Guillen. Barry Greenstein is just four bet pre-flop with Ace King. Like a boss. Guillen with the decision, eight ten of clubs. I would imagine Aniel probably knows Barry means business at this point. Though if he did take a flop, he'd had plenty of equity. Aniel decides to fold. Barry wins a pot, but he is still down on the day. Aniel Guillen's got off to a good start in this tournament, up to nearly 47,000. Now, there are no whole card cameras on this table, but we know the player's cards because of RFID technology. You know, that they have a signal, you know, they can tell what the cards are when you put them on that thing. What do you mean they can tell what the cards are? Instead of having a visual thing that, you know, they're, you know, they've got a radio signal that when you put it here, you know, uh, RFID is actually, I think, like the TV uh, remote control thing. Not really, if I get called down by Jack High by somebody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It won't mean anything, it'll mean your Chino. <laughs> right, but still. Welcome to the world of tomorrow! You guys are gonna make that sound cool in post, right? <laughs> You'll be all right. To the outer tables. Dan Smith took down the super high roller here in Barcelona. So if a guy just won a super high roller like yesterday, do you root for him to lose or to keep crushing souls? Let us know on Twitter, hashtag EBT Barcelona. Smith has bet 10,000 on the river. Manuel Morito moves all in. Smith insta calls. He's got a set of kings. Morito has one pair. No, we can all shed a tear for Morito's seeming cold deck here, but in general, if you're going to be shoving for only 3,500 more, you should have a ridiculously strong hand because your opponent is never folding. Some folks just don't want to grind out a 3K stack, but now he's out of the tournament. He's got nothing to grind, so there. Dan Smith, meanwhile, up to 64,000, double his starting stack. Speaking of guys who don't need the money. Justin Bonomo won the super high roller in Monaco at the grand final last season. Mike the Grinder Mizraki mainly plays high buy-in events in Las Vegas, and he's won two of them. And more high rollers taking their seats, Jason Mercia and Gus Hansen. Oh man, Gus's win is only for 800K, what a loser. Start for 30? Yes. Yep. Beautiful. Morning, everybody, how y'all doing? Fine, Daniel, how are you? Slept well, ready to go. Hey, Lena from Sweden. How are you? Yeah, you look good. I'm not that, you know, I'm surprised, just the same. <laughs> I just woke up. Oh, nice. And I feel good. Get like. Get like. Do not try to bluff a Scandi off pretty much the nuts. Unless you have the actual nuts. But then I guess you wouldn't be bluffing. Oh man, my head hurts. Back to our feature table. Well, the action is on another Scandi, a good friend of Theo Jorgensen's, Johnny Lodden. He's got ace 10 off suit, and from under the gun plus one, he raises to 400. He's already lost two thirds of his stack. Classic Lodden. Lasfara has folded. Gianluca Benvenuto. It's almost a certainty young Emperor Palpatine will want to see a flop with that hand. He calls from the hijack with his pocket threes. Philippe Belli will call on the button with 8-9 off. And Elki will call in the big blind. Easy defend. It's the early stage of this tournament, so there's going to be some fairly loose preflop play while these kids are all stacked deep and have got the chips to horse around with. And we are going to see a few multi-way pots. Well, the flop is 8-8-10. Eight, eight, Top pair for Elki and Lodden. Trips for Belly. Elki less than 1% to win the hand. Seven. He checks to Johnny Lodden, who bets 700. Johnny Lodden also not so hot this hand. Benvenuto folds his pocket threes. Belly calls. Elki quickly folds. Elki folds top pair, smooth as silk. Robe. Heads up to the turn. The ace of diamonds. Lodden now with top two. Hi ya. Johnny did pick up some equity there. He bets 1,600. 
He's now 8% instead of 1. Belly raises, makes it 3,350 total. Johnny's got the kind of hand to take a hero to fold. Look at Belly, he looks pretty pleased with himself, eh? Lodden calls, nearly 10k in the middle. Lodden with around 6,000 behind. Quads now for Belly on the river. A full house for Lodden. This is just a horrific run out for Johnny. He's now got two full houses, and this makes Belly's quads harder to read than the fine print in my contract. Oh yeah, milk no sugar, by the way. Coming right up. How much will a Canadian bet? 3,900. Johnny knows there's no value in raising, probably thinks he's chopping. He calls. And Belly shows the quad eights. Johnny Lodden now down to 2,000 in chips. You guys think we're gonna get a good belly laugh? Elkie, come on, help me out here. Philippe Belly now among the early tournament chip leaders with a stack of more than 51,000. And here's Johnny. All cold decks and no pots make Johnny a short stack. What does Johnny Lodden think his chances of winning this tournament are? Tag your tweets. EPT Barcelona. For nine straight years, Barcelona has hosted the PokerStars.com European Poker Tour, with each season getting bigger and better. And this year, the event's had an amazing makeover. Well, it, it, I guess it's just the evolution to make it more electronics and everything. I guess you could say it's like the, uh, the poker version of a rock concert, right? So uh, we might as well have a light show just like rock concerts have. The last rock concert Barry went to was in the 70s. The 1870s. Cardigan up top. Top pair versus a set. Yeesh. Doesn't look like Barry's going to be around for the encore. 1,500. The player with the set is Thomas Harkonnen, and he bets 1,500. Unless Harkonnen's a big fan of donk betting, looks like he was the one to three bet pre-flop and Barry called. Well, Barry has called the 1,500 and picks up a flush draw on the turn. Things a little less bleak for Barry. 3,000. Harkonnen now bets 3,000. Barry really doesn't want to raise here and bloat the pot any more than he has to, and if he hits the heart, it'll be pretty unexpected. Well, it isn't a heart, it's the three of spades on the river. Harkonnen's set is good. He goes for value, 5,500. And this is just a soul raid situation. Barry thinks top pair might be good, he calls. It's not good. Both these guys played it just fine. The rock concert of poker tours is just a young man's world. So Barry had actually won a bit since we last saw him, and now we've just seen him lose a bit. Back to our feature table, where Philippe Belly has the chip lead. Johnny Lodden is the short stack. Blind still 75-150. Actions on Elke in his kimono. And he's got aces under the gun. And he's doing a good job of looking pretty bored by them. Which may not be an act. He could just not enjoy the challenge of how easy it is to play aces. Sicko. <laughs> he raises to 325. Hasn't found a customer so far. Blas Svara has King Deuce off. That'll go in the muck. Hold it around to Phil Gruesome. Yes, Phil Gruesome. This kid's always good for some action. 7-9 suited on the button. I wonder where Elkie keeps his wallet in that thing. You know what? I don't want to know. Gruesome calls. Elite belly folds from the small blind. And the big blind will pass as well. We're going to go heads up to the flop. Elkie with way the best hand. Gruesome with a decent hand for cracking aces. And he's flopped a double gutter. Elkie's still nearly a 2-1 to one favorite. And he continues for 400. Oh, Philip. 13. He raises to 1,300. The semi bluff raise. Told you this kid's always good for some action. Elkie not folding of. No, he calls nonchalantly, and this battle of the high rollers continues to the turn. Which is the six of diamonds giving Gruesome the straight. That turn card is the worst thing to happen to Elkie since he caught that kimono in an elevator door. He checks. My guess is that Elkie's just going to have to station the pants off of Gruesome unless this board gets obviously worse. 2,500. 2,500. Elkie's already stationed his own pants off. 
Super gross spot for Elky. Phil's probably not always raising all of his two pairs and sets either, so there are way more bluffs in his range than there are hands that have Elky beat. And that six really only helped a few specific hands. Elky does call. Nearly eight and a half thousand in the middle. With Elky drawing dead, the inconsequential king of spades on the river. Elky will check. And Gruesome will bet 7,500. This spot is grosser for Elky than the part of the robe he's been sitting on all day. That's a visual image I really didn't need. And it looks like Elky is folding. He lets it go. Wow, what a read. I don't know how he does that. So, 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 so many people are calling there. I saw. Show on, show on. Show on, show all. Show on, show on card. I never, never see you show anything. I think if he shows either card, Elky knows he made the right decision. And that's inaccurate, I think. If you look under the table, I bet Elky's showing plenty. You'll be pleased to hear we do not have under the table cameras. <laughs> Season 10, please. We're heading out into the field. Let's catch up on Daniel Negreanu's progress. Involved in a hand against Anthony Cruz. Negreanu is checked. And Cruz is bet, 550. Call. Call. Just call. What accent's that meant to be? I love it when Daniel makes fun of people's accents at the table. Hashtag things no one says. Seven of diamonds on the turn. Daniel now leads out for 1600. This board's gonna be all over the kind of whackness Daniel likes to play. Cruz folds, Negranu wins the pot. Still down around 9K on the day. Across the room, we find Theo Jorgensen facing a bet from Jurki Statukangas. 6,300, Theo calls. Potential flush and Broadway out there now. 10,000. Theo bets 10,000 on the river. And the fin falls. Notice how you went with the fin that time. I'm pretty sure you were pretty sure I would have folded. Well, Jose, that's nacho business. Keep it to yourself. After winning that pot, Theo Jorgensen is up to 51,500, making him one of the tournament chip leaders. He is third in chips overall. The man out in front is Dan Smith on an amazing heater after winning the super high roller here in Barcelona. Second on the leaderboard is Philippe Belli, who we've been watching on our feature table. I love this fisheye angle. It's like we're in a Busta Rhymes video. Well, we've just run through the big stacks in the tournament. Of course, poor Johnny Lodden's at the opposite end of the spectrum with just 2,000. There's a raise from Denius Antonitis. Ace-8 suited, he's made it 400. Antonitis sounds like some kind of affliction. I got a bad case of Antonitis. Phil Gruesome has king-queen in the hijack, he calls. Or did you ever see me bluffing? Yes. Philippe Belly didn't want to show his whole cards to the camera, but he's calling from the cutoff. <sighs> you guys know I can't do this without whole cards. Elky has pocket nines in the small blind. He calls. Now this one's getting great odds. Which one? That one. Which one? The one on the screen. There are lots of players on the screen. I'm talking about that one. This conversation's over. Andre Honor calls out of the big blind, and we go five way to the flop. It's a little pre-flop party, and Elky's already dressed for the hot tub. 10, deuce, three. Elky checks. Honor checks. Antonitis does not continue. Gruesome checks. And Philippe Belly also checks. Okay, I think I have a read on Belly. I've narrowed his range down to a draw for a wild and a napkin. The board pairs on the turn. Elky's likely to think he's gonna have the best hand most of the time after this card hits. He bets. Fold from Honor. Antonitis calls. That call looks a little reckless, but if you don't think Elky could be bluffing with a wheel draw or total air, you obviously haven't checked out his wardrobe. Gruesome and Belly have got out of the way. We go heads up to the river, which is the three of diamonds. 22-25. Elky bets again. Antonitis might think he's going to be ahead pretty often and chopping a lot of the time when he's not. 22-25. He calls. 
Tens and threes with an ace kick and no good. Elkie's nines play. Antonitis, an affliction that causes one to call down maniacs with only ace high. If you think you might be suffering from Antonitis, please contact your doctor. So Elkie back up to around his starting stack. And if you have just joined us, yes, we are aware that he is wearing a kimono. I was in vacation with Eugene around Asia and we were in Japan just before we came here. I really love the culture there and the food and I love the country. And then we were like in Kyoto and like passing by those shops and I saw those like really nice kimonos. I'm like, wow, they look so cool, you know? Maybe I should play in Barcelona wearing one of those. So I just got it and actually I got really lucky because it's kind of hot here and it's uh, super comfortable. But I think it's really nice. Yeah, I like it, you know, I like to dress up differently and to bring like, a, lot, a lot more fun to the poker world. I think it's, it's kind of cool, so I try to do it as much as possible. It was my first time in Japan, actually. Masakagawa and uh, John Jonda were like really incredible hosts, so they showed us like, so many great things. And uh, we're really glad and lucky that they were able to help us because Japan is really amazing, but if you don't speak Japanese, it's kind of tougher. Or like, if you don't really know the places, it can be a little bit tougher to discover the food array of things he has to offer. I mean, there's not much poker in those countries anyways, and I think it's really good to take a break sometimes so you come back hungry, yeah. Elki's kimono may be super comfortable for him, but what about for the rest of us? Lines up to 100-200. Johnny Lodden playing a 17 big blind stack. Action is on Elki with ace-king. He raises from early position to 425. Blas Svara is on the button. He has King-10 suited. 425. Like my best friend from high school who married a total shrew, Svara is dominated. He has called. Phil Gruesome, Queen-8 in the big blind. He will call as well. Gruesome getting about 5-1. to one. So, three-way to the flop, which is Ace-10 Jack. Top pair for Elki. Everybody's got some piece of this. Elki decides not to bet. Probably for pot control. Svara, with bottom pair and a gut shot, will bet 725. Elki probably didn't want to play a big pot three ways, not in position with one pair on a board that's wetter than an airport bathroom. Hang on a second, what's happening here? Phil Gruesome is raising to 2,200. Nah, the old double gutter check raise switcheroo. This is a really scary board and I like this raise a lot. Wow. Elki folds the best hand. The action's back on Svara. Elki got bluffed, but that was a pretty bad spot for him. A bet and a raise on this board is going to look scarier than another Paranormal Activity sequel. And look at this, a re-raise from Svara to 5,150. Now this raise I don't love. For some reason, Svara feels the need to narrow his range down to monsters and Kaka. Gruesome calls. Both these raises were polarizing, but the three bet was even more so. Five of clubs on the turn. Svara now with a flush draw as well. Gruesome checks to him. Not sure if that flop three bet by Svara was value or bluffing. I'm pretty sure he doesn't know either. He decides to check the turn. And the river is another 10. Trips for Svara and a lock on the hand. Svara was already ahead, but he just got there in a big way. And Phil Gruesome makes a mistimed bluff, betting 4,500. I think Phil's making this bet thinking he can get Svara to fold some two pair hands, but even if that were the case, I think he'd be mistaken. Svara calls. <sighs> Queen high, no good, Phil. Whoops. And Blas Svara now up to 41,000. Meanwhile, Elki's probably realizing he folded when he was ahead, but that he would have lost anyways. Either that or he, like many of us, is wondering who that cute Asian girl was in all the photos in the feature. Phil Gruesome did about 10,000 chips in that hand, down to 18 and a half K. But this is still very much the early stages. The action continues here at the Casino Barcelona after the break. Welcome back to the PokerStars.com EPT Barcelona. The biggest tournament ever held in Spain, with more than 1,000 players. Big names from across the globe have made the trip here, with two top pros, Elki and Philip Gruesome, headlining our feature table on day 1B. Earlier, the two clashed in what ended up being a massive setback for Elki and a big coup for Gruesome. 
I was playing fairly tight and I got a season under the gun, so I raised to 325 and it's folded to Phil Kusem in the button who calls. I have 97 suited. I call 100%. Uh, we are deep. Aki is not playing a lot of hands, but uh, I don't care with 97 suited. And flop came Jack 85 with two hearts, which is pretty good. So I bet 400 and he makes it 13, which is pretty big sizing already. Obviously, he could do it with some combo draws, maybe some not flush draw or something. I think it's better to raise and then decide from, from there if I want to check behind and on the turn if he calls, or if I want to just keep on barreling and barrel him off his over pairs. So I decided to raise and he like hesitated a little bit and called. The turn is the, the six of diamonds. I'm dancing around a little bit. He's always checking to me, I bet. 2,500 and um, he tried to fold really hard. And uh, I probably could have folded there if I was playing like super good, but uh, yeah, I think already in the other turn, in that spot I'm beat quite a lot of the time. But uh, I could, <laughs> I could anyways, and then the river was an absolute king. And I checked and now he bets 7,500, which is a huge bet and I think it polarizes his hand a lot. The dream card for me because he's having kings there a lot. <laughs> and aces, he might uh, level into it and pay it off. So I bet pretty big, I think. And uh, yeah, after a while he folded, unfortunately, but still a good pot for me. Remember how after Jaws came out, people were murdering sharks left and right? Well, after people see that Pro Explains, a lot of people are going to be going broke with 7-9 suited. A lot. From one German player to another, one of two Germans to have won this tournament in previous years, Sebastian Ruthenberg. Makes sense, since Germany and Spain do border each other. And Boris Becker is a German who secured his first ever EPT cash in Barcelona last year. Involved in a hand here against Anatoly Gertevoy. On the turn, Becker bets 850. Gertevoy calls. Queen on the river. Check. Becker checks. Gertevoy bets. Is it? And Becker folds. It's possible that B-backs had a decent hand that turned into absolute trash bags. Not good. But we also know that B-backs plays tighter than a new tennis racket. Boris isn't the only sports star playing in this tournament today. Fatima Demelo won a gold medal in hockey in the Beijing Olympics. Hello, Fatima. Who hat it? Would you like to see some more ladies, Stapleton? Oui. Bonjour, Lucille. Comment allez-vous? Y buenos dias, Anna. Como estas? Y calvene, je t'aime, and te quiero. I love the way Google Translate makes you look like a man of the world. That is just unfair, but accurate. Back to the feature table, blinds 100-200. Johnny Lodden still nursing that short stack. Action's on Phil Gruesome. He's on the button. There's Jack-8 off. Unopened on the button, Phil Gruesome, it's a raise. Sure enough, he makes it 400. Now, I'm probably free betting a Phil Gruesome unopened button raise with Ace-10, but then again, I also like the movie Night at the Roxbury. Hmm, we'll talk later. Philippe Belly will call out of the small blind. Jorge Lopez will also call with Queen-4 suited in the big. Lopez was getting 5-1. to one. Pretty hard not to defend with that. Then again, it's also pretty hard to hit a flop with it. Top pair for Gruesome. Which he didn't even need to do since he's in position and he's an absolute beast. What's going on here? A don't bet from Belly with ace high. Looks like Philippe's got some fire in his belly in the form of a donk bet. Lopez folds. Uh, Phil Gruesome will call. Not a huge fan of doing that into two people. Jack of clubs on the turn. Phil now with two pair. Belly with the nut flush draw. Well, let's see if he keeps firing. Nope, he checks. Of course, he could always do that. I don't know. I kind of like to keep betting when I pick up equity, especially draw to the nuts. 2,000. Two thirds of the pot. Gruesome should have no problem bet calling a shove. Belly does not raise, however. He just calls. All right, Belly's giving me a belly ache. I think you have to build a pot there. You're not always going to hit your clubs. So you need to get a fold there sometimes. Queen of Diamonds on the river changes nothing. And now Belly will go for a bluff. 2,900. This bluff is not going to work. Is Phil Gruesome really thinking about folding? Flash. He calls. Oh. Hey, side. Whoops. 
Don't rub it. Oh, you look so sad. I can honestly say most pros would have played every single street differently. Whatever. Hmm? Whatever works in my not a good hand. Whatever. You went too bad. Yeah, if I have Yeah, no, no. bad hand. <laughs> I'm holding this one. <laughs> oh, what a nice boy. Gruesome's had an unbelievable 12 months on the EPT, but despite his accomplishments in high roller tournaments, he's probably best remembered for getting slightly inebriated in Berlin. It's time to drink a beer. I like to joke around a little bit and yeah. My Nurko Hanka was has to go ma Spachanya Morgan Ding and Sena. This is the face of someone who was drunk yesterday, possibly still this morning, and almost certainly again later. Over to the secondary feature table. Let's pick up the action on the turn. Aniel Gear now has trip eight. Robin Ulatello has ace high. Aniel's been on the tour for a while, team pro from Mexico. He bets 1,625. Olatello could certainly just fold here, despite the gut shot and the fact that ace high might be good sometimes, but no. He calls. And the river is a jack. So Guillen's hand holds. Question is, how much will he bet here? The answer, 4,350. A jack was a pretty big brick. Olatello may be leveling himself into landing on the air side of the it's either an eight or it's air debate. He calls. However, just because your name is Robin doesn't mean you have to be a hero. Again, up to 40,800. Leave that to Batman. You just wait in the car. Out in the field, it's Nacho Barbero versus Theo Jorgensen. Nacho thought he had a read on Theo before. Does he now? Does Theo know that and therefore do the opposite of what he was doing before to throw Nacho off his game? Or does he do the same thing, thinking Nacho might be thinking he's doing a different thing? He's folded. Man, almost got there. So Nacho Barbero down to 15,000, half of his starting stack. Theo Jorgensen has more than doubled his stack, up to 63,600, still amongst the tournament chip leaders, third in chips overall. Some familiar names on the leaderboard, including a couple of EPT champions, David Katai and Toby Lewis. Aniel Gian's up there. Dan Smith is now second in chips. The tournament chip leader is Philippe Belli. Guy's been playing a lot of hands, and for the most part, He's been winning them. Action's been forwarded to Phil Gruesome at the feature table. 9-10 suited, under the gun plus one. He is raising, makes it 450. There is the chip leader. King-Queen suited. Belly's got Phil's spades nutted. Lopez is out. Elke, with 8-10 off, will fold. There goes one of Gruesome's tens. Pocket aces, what's Mr. Singular Sensation gonna do with the bullet? <laughs> this guy's name is actually synonymous with an ace, so fitting. He raises, it's a three bet to 1575. Passed around to Antonitis, at least I think that's Antonitis. Lord of the Sith. He's got sevens. Now you wanna see a flop of those, but action's been opened back up behind you. You kinda can't. He lets it go. So it's back on Gruesome. I think this is a fold too, I'm afraid to say, out of position. But if he was all about the 7-9 suited, then he's going to be all about the 10-9 suited. Phil does call. Belly's getting about 3.5 to 1. He probably doesn't know that, though. 75 or 20. Yep. Story checks out. And if we see big cards or some spades, we are going to see a firefight. Three-way to the flop. And that flop has two spades on it. Well, two guys have spades and one guy has a hand you could never fold on this flop. Action's on Gruesome. He leads out for 2,600. Gruesome donk betting, wants to make sure this pot either gets bigger or he just wins it right now. Belly is trapped in the middle but is certainly never letting this go. He calls. What does Andre Honor do now? He makes a chunky raise to 7,275. Gruesome is out. Correctly reading that his flush draw might not even be live. Belly's got a shot to crack these aces, but let's not forget that Gruesome just folded two of his outs. Oh. 
He calls. We are going heads up to the turn. It's the three of clubs. It's the right color. It's the wrong shapey thing. Ace is still way good. Goes check, check. Whoa, weird turn check by Anna. A king on the river, so Belly hits a pair. It's the best non-spade card you could hit. Sort of. He checks again. And he checks. That's the right move in this case, but in general, you should probably be value betting a river top pair second kicker. There's the value bet from Honor, 16,575. You really can't blame Belly if he calls here. The aces check on the term was bizarre. Belly does call. And it got him paid. But I thought he has. Obviously, you knew he had aces. Just a feeling in your belly. Andre Honor wins nearly 30,000 chips. Yeah, he can't have yeah. And we have a new tournament chip leader, the Romanian, out in front with 70,400. If you want to play in an EPT event, go to PokerStars.com, where there are qualifiers every day. I'm Anjo Guillén, and you're watching the Season 9 of the APT Barcelona. Famous faces and top pros have gathered for another season of the PokerStars.com European Poker Tour. Dane Theo Jorgensen is off to a flyer in the top five on the leaderboard, while his good friend Johnny Lodden is having a torrid time. The Norwegian's down to less than 3,000 ships. Along with Finn Villavalbeck, Theo and Johnny can often be seen together on tour, traveling and hanging out at each EPT. The best part about being on tour is going down there with these two guys who are extremely funny. I have an amazing story about Johnny Lodden. We are at PT Berlin for the fifth time, probably. And we always stay at Potsdamer Platz. The first thing Johnny sees when he gets in the taxi is the big sign where it says Potsdamer Platz. And Johnny says, oh, this is Potsdamer Platz. This is supposed to be a nice area, Theo. <laughs> Have you ever been here? <laughs> and that one had me on the floor. I couldn't breathe. <laughs> it's like, he's been living there for five years. Now he realizes that this is actually part of Star Wars. That's Johnny. That's Johnny Laden. I ran into Johnny Laden about 3 a.m. in Berlin when I pointed out that he was trying to drink through a straw with a wrapper still on. He fired three packets of barbecue sauce at me. Joke's on him, though, because he had to eat those nuggets dry. Johnny Laden is all in and at risk. Jorge Lopez open from the hijack with pocket eights. Johnny came over the top, shoving his 15 big blind stack with ace nine. Lopez obviously called. And it's a race. Johnny thinking about better days on the Potsdamer plots. There is a nine on the flop. Lodden takes the lead. Lopez down to two outs. Johnny Lodden just has to fade an eight on the river. Lopez down to 5% equity. It's a king. Johnny gets the double up. Hey, Johnny, you know you should check out EPT Barcelona sometime. It's lovely. Not too big a hit for Lopez. He'll survive. Patience. I'm sure it was patience that got you down to three chips in the first place, eh, Johnny? We've got action over at the secondary feature table. A flush versus a straight. Aniel Gian with the flush. Mata Kelchitz with the straight. And this is unfortunate. It's a cold deck, and it's pretty tough to give your opponent credit for flopping a flush. Action's on Aniel, and he will bet. 4,350 on the river. Pretty much a full pot size bet. Cooler, but Kalchit's got one thing going for him. His straight isn't even remotely the nuts. It's not even the best straight. While he calls, and sees that his opponent had it on the flop. Straight on a flush board is basically the same as a bad flush, so yeah, cooler. It's also an extra little near that Kalchit's favorite hand is Queen Jack suited. Not anymore. So far, so good for Aniel Guillen. Up to nearly 50,000 in chips. Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. Well, that'll wake you up. It's Isabel Baltazar, who final tabled last year's event, who bets this flop for a 1,000. Uh -oh. She's been known to utilize her top pair for its cargo space. Andrei Vladimirovich folded to her bat. Daniel Negreanu called. 
Negreanu checks again. Baltazar bets again. She seems pretty confident. Confident that Daniel was going to call. To the river we go. The eight of diamonds. Flush draw just came in. Daniel now bets. 4,200. Kind of a bomb. Daniel's big bets almost always polarizing. Isabel seemed confident before. Not so much now. She calls. And Negrano shows king nine of diamonds. He got there on the river. That's what the French call Le Nuts. A decent sized pot for Daniel Negrano. He's now playing 35,400, so around the tournament average. That's above average, James. Does anyone else feel like Elki's from the future? This set could easily be a spaceship, and Elki could be the ship's hip captain. I'm pretty sure you're not meant to wear black trainers with white socks with a kimono. Fashion is weird in the future, James. Action's been folded around to Jorge Lopez. He has Ace King. And he eventually raises, makes it 450. Love the eventual raise, one of my favorite raises. Tournament chip leader Andre Ono a call from the cutoff. Johnny Lodden will call from the button. Johnny's still very short. He can call now, but if he proceeds too much further, he's oh. gonna have to get it in. Danius Antonitis calls out of the big blind with ace seven of diamonds. Four way to the flop. A lot of aces already out. Lopez has got both Johnny and Danius dominated. Ace three eight. This could mean trouble for at least two of these players, especially Johnny. Antonitis checks. Will Lopez see bet? Well, he had the eventual raise, and now the eventual bet. 750. Andre on a folds. Lodden will call. Drawing nearly dead and with an ever dwindling stack. Antonitis. Now check raises. Not really sure what's up with this check raise. If he thinks Johnny's got a better ace and he's trying to get him to fold, Johnny would have likely shoved pre-flop. Total of 2,500. Lopez, who has the best hand, calls. What does Johnny do now? Once this goes raise call, it's over, Johnny. It's over. Oh, the pump fake. He does get out of the way. And he's back down to less than 5K. Heads up to the turn. Which is a 10. Johnny would have turned two pair. Ah, that's a little annoying. Antonitis now slows down. He checks. Lopez bets 2,000. Johnny should save his frustration, which will eventually be warranted. But right now, he could have been up against the set. Antonitis calls that small bet. His check raise got called. Now he's being bet into. I wonder when Antonitis is going to realize that he's beat. On the river brings the deuce of diamonds. Lopez's ace king is good. And he's going to bet 3,500. Nice little value bet. And apparently Antonitis, the affliction that makes one unable to fold, is a serious problem for this guy. He calls. And his kicker is no good. Johnny cannot believe that joker got out of line and made him fold ace 10. It's like when you're playing blackjack and the guy next to you hits when the dealer's got a six showing. You want to kill them. Meanwhile, Jorge Lopez increases his stack by 50%. Johnny Lodden down to 25 big blinds. They survived. It's like this. On to the next hand. Yep. <laughs> fold it around to Lopez. Queen five off. He'll fold that. Elki has king 10 off. He's in mid-position. 425. And he's raising to 425. Aces for Johnny Lodden. Now, does he want to get cute, or does he want to do just what he's supposed to do? A regular three bet with his stack is going to look pretty strong, even against a ninja warrior like Elki. He moves all in. Antonitis with sevens. Again with sevens in a spot where he really doesn't have to get involved if he doesn't want to. He doesn't get involved. Svara in the small blind. Will fold. As will Benvenuto in the big. Well, the good news, Johnny, is that your raise is getting plenty of respect. Elki mucks the king ten. Ugh, worst win ever. 
I can tell you one thing. Some barbecue sauce is getting thrown later. Well, Elkie's not having a particularly good day either. Johnny Lodden, still shy of 30 big blinds. His friend Theo Jorgensen's been faring better. Let's catch up with Theo on the outer tables. He's actually just moved all in on a board of 394. Decision is on Erkan Olgen. It's going to cost him everything he's got. He calls. Jorgensen shows top set. Top set, probably good. Olgen has kings. Ew, gross. It's a board Theo could have been semi bluffing. Tough to full kings in that spot, though. So Erkan Olgen is eliminated. Erkan is irked, can. And Theo Jorgensen adds more chips to his ever increasing stack. I think Theo Jorgensen just became our chip leader. Yames? Indeed, he's now playing 65,500. He is out in front midway through day 1B of EPT Barcelona. Andre Honor from our feature table now second on the leaderboard. Giuseppe Pantaleo, who made the final table here two seasons ago, is third. Dan Smith still in the top five. Both Aniel Guillen and Philippe Belli also in the top ten. It's been going, uh, my day has been going fantastic. I've pretty much hit a set every time I've played with a pair in my hand, so I can't complain. The plan for the rest of the day is not to melt. That's plan number one. Second plan is to take it easy and just uh, hit my sets and then double up from there on. Day one is really always about survival. You can't win the tournament on day one, but you can lose it, right? It's a sim simple statement, but it's true. So uh, really, on day one, there's usually a lot worse players, so you can allow them to make mistakes, and you just have to play a little more careful. Next time, the pressure is on to advance to day two, as the grinder tries to pulverize the competition at our feature table. My tournament play is just the exact opposite of a grinder. I try to accumulate as many chips as I can. Fatima de Melo is looking for more than a min cash. To make a final table here in Barcelona for the first time, that'd be amazing. And Irishman Jude Ainsworth proves he isn't scared of anyone. I enjoy this room. And next time we're going to bust here. The temperature is rising in Barcelona as day 1B continues. <laughs>